Aspect ratios. There are a few common ones that we see in video today. Most movies use an aspect ratio of 1.85 to 1 or 2.39 to 1. Television uses an aspect ratio of 1.78 to 1, also commonly known as 16 by 9. Then there's the old aspect ratio which was shared by both movies and television, 1.33 to 1, or commonly known as 4 by 3. But there's one other aspect ratio that, while not as common, is still used today. And that's 1.66 to 1. But where did this aspect ratio come from? And why do some directors still choose to use it? To learn more about this, we'll need to look back at the early 1950s. It was a time when movies were trying to compete with a relatively new technology called television. Television was taking America by storm, and movies were feeling the pressure with declining ticket sales. So they decided to innovate by releasing their movies in widescreen, and it worked. Some of the new widescreen movies that were a hit included epics like The Robe and Ben-Hur. But these movies used an anamorphic process which created an ultra-wide image. The first movie of the 1950s to try widescreen was a film called Shane released by Paramount. Shane created a wider image by simply cropping off the top and bottom of the 35mm image. This was a much simpler way of creating a wide image compared to the anamorphic process. What was the aspect ratio that Paramount chose for Shane? Well, it was the ratio of 1.66 to 1. The early 1950s was a crazy time for aspect ratios in Hollywood. Every studio wanted in on the widescreen action, and every studio essentially created its own version with its own aspect ratio. Paramount, for a little while, stuck with the 1.66 to 1 aspect ratio which they had created for Shane. Movies that used this aspect ratio included White Christmas and Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window. There ended up being so many different aspect ratios that some films were released in more than one. An example of this is On the Waterfront, which was released in 1.37 to 1, 1.66 to 1, and 1.85 to 1. Eventually, the major Hollywood studios settled on the two common aspect ratios that we see today, 1.85 to 1 and 2.39 to 1. This left 1.66 to 1 pretty much obsolete in the US. However, in Europe, the movie studios and theaters decided to use 1.66 to 1 as their common aspect ratio. This difference in aspect ratios led to many foreign produced movies, like the films of Hammer Horror, to be shot in an aspect ratio of 1.66 to 1. They were then cropped to a 1.85 to 1 for an American release. Probably one of the most famous examples of this is the first three Bond films. Another example of where 1.66 to 1 continued to be used was with Disney. They used it in their animated movies from the 1980s to the early 2000s. Why did they do this? Well, 1.66 to 1 fell between the cinematic aspect ratio of 1.85 to 1 and the home video 4x3. It was a compromise between the two formats. The movie would be created in a 1.66 to 1, then cropped on the top and bottom for its theatrical release. For the home video release, the 1.66 to 1 image would be cropped on the sides to 4x3. Another common use for 1.66 to 1 was with Super 16mm films. This was a popular film format for independent filmmakers. That is until digital cameras came along in the 2000s. So why would a modern director choose to use this old aspect ratio today? Well, there are several reasons, and these range from artistic expression to personal preference. Some directors want to give their movie a European feel, while others want to evoke the time period that this aspect ratio was used. Aspect ratios are just another tool you can use in filmmaking, and each one is associated with something different and can enhance your story. And there are so many more aspect ratios than the two common ones we see today. Learn them, and if they work for your story, use them. Thanks for watching.